Dan, uh, right. to upgrade at all-time highs. All right, uh, give us the give us the thesis. Yeah, I mean, this is really, obviously, we continue to be majorly bullish. This is really raising our price target, you know, to what we think is 260, 265 could really be for starters. It's all about iPhone 11 here. We continue to think China is tracking about 20 percent ahead of expectations. I think that's really something that's putting fuel in the tank. And then you look at services. I think services could add about $15 per share to the stock. That's why, in our opinion, this part is just getting started with Apple. I, I continue to see new all-time highs as we continue to roll through earnings. Krish, where do you stand on Apple right now? And given all of the trade talk headlines we're getting, does that change anything? No, I mean, we've been bullish on Apple since we initiated uh, in uh, mid-March. And I think our core thesis has hinged on services, and I think we're still very bullish on that. I think what you've seen incrementally at the margin over the last couple of months was uh, sentiment turned positive on the iPhone side. So I think that is kind of being additive to the stock. I would say one of the things is that when it comes to iPhones, investors get to have a more tangible handle on what's going on. With services, it feels a little more intangible. But I think the bottom line is that we are still bullish on the name. And there's still a lot of runway. You've just seen some extra juice in the last month uh, because of iPhone momentum and then in the last few days because of the trade war momentum. Dan, are we back to the phone itself contributing markedly to incremental profit growth? Or are we still in the school of it's going to be uh, services, uh, accessories, uh, and, and, um, and things like that? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I mean, right I think... now, the Rock of Gibraltar continues to be the iPhone. And, and ultimately, they're going to need to really put a fence around their install base in China as well as the U.S. So in terms of iPhone, that's going to continue to really be the core DNA of Cupertino. But in terms of where the growth's coming from, that's services. That's where we think, especially on the streaming side, they have an opportunity to get 100 million subs over the next three to four years. That's really the fuel in the tank in that one-two punch. Chris, what happens if we get some sort of limited within these China trade talks and, and potential for a some sort of deal or at least a pause in tariffs right now? If Huawei is a piece of that and this idea that maybe U.S. suppliers can can actually start to sell some of their components once again to uh, that Chinese company, what does that do to, I guess, the calculus here for, for the semi stocks? I mean, uh, for semi-stocks, it's obviously going to be positive, given the fact that, you know, Huawei is a big uh, part of the supply chain or the ecosystem for semis. I think uh, at the end of the day, if you look at it relative to Apple, you know, um, Huawei has been a, a big competitor for iPhones in China. It continues to be. I think uh, what will be interesting, I think, that's, is next year, Apple is supposed to come out with a new SE2 product, a low-cost low price version of the iPhone, I think at the margin that could be uh, more competitive, especially in price sensitive geographies like India and China, where Huawei has a pretty big market share. But I think the bottom line is trade resolution is going to be positive on the semi ecosystem. Um, but the new iPhones are actually very competitive versus the Huawei's in, in price sensitive geographies. Yeah. Dan, you know, there's still a debate out there about whether 5G is going to be enough of a selling point to the consumer in terms of how it changes your phone's performance. Uh, where are you on that? And if you do believe, like some, that it's not going to change uh, performance, is the phone we're in, the cycle we're in, going to be enough of a bridge? Yeah, it's a great question. I continue to think that you know the phone right now, in terms of 5G, it's really going to ultimately be the applications and the technology which won't really come till 2021. That's why when we look at 5G, we do view that as a super cycle going 2020 for Apple. But right now, the name of the game is a third of the install base is in the process of upgrading. And I think that's really what's surprising some of the bears, that even though they continue to yell fire in a crowd theater, if you look at this cycle with 5G combined, that's a super cycle. That's why I view this as a stock that's going to continue to get re-rated and with services and right now, they are the poster child for the U.S.-China trade war. And that's a 20 to $25 overhang on Apple. You remove that, you're going to see a stock go much higher here.